In my last video, we went over my entire watch collection, and I realized that I forgot a few watches that I don't currently have in my collection, but I did want to talk about them. So today we're going to be talking about five watches that I have moved on from and have sold and are no longer in my collection, and kind of why I decided to sell them. To start off this list, we're going to be talking about the Timex Navi XL. This is a 41 millimeter watch and the colorway that I had it in was the brown colorway. The photo doesn't really do it justice. It kind of makes it look like it's a, like a dark brown, but it's really like a more creamy, like light khaki almost color. Like it's kind of brown. It's more tan than it is brown. So funny enough, my reason for buying this watch was this was the watch that really started off my like bad addiction to watches. My Invicta was my first automatic watch. My Casio was my first like watch watch, but I bought this a little over a year ago. And this is what kind of kicked off me just getting crazy into watches. What I wanted was some kind of dive watch that resembled the James Bond No Time to Die Seamaster because at the time the, that movie had just barely kind of came out and it was my favorite movie. And me not knowing anything about watches, I started looking it up and I realized that it was 10,000, give or take $10,000. And in my head, I was like $10,000 for a watch. What? And so Caden, not really knowing anything, started looking up watches that kind of looked similar and had similar vibes. And I actually got a Facebook ad for this watch. And when I saw it, I'm like, oh, that kind of has the same like kind of brownie color scheme. Like it has the same kind of vibes. And so I saw that it was a good price. It was automatic. This was also at the time when I was wearing an Apple watch every single day because I just didn't really care about watches. And I'm like, you know what? It'd be cool to have an automatic watch again. And so I bought it. Funny enough, this watch is what led me to learn about Teddy Baldassar, who makes awesome videos on watches and just information on watches and the watch world in general. And if I'm being honest, now that I'm thinking about it, Teddy, it is your fault why I currently have a watch addiction. Cause I think I watched all of your videos after I watched the video on the Timex Navi XL. It, it is Teddy Baldassar's fault why I'm into watches. Well, addicted to watches. And so spending a little bit more time with the watch, I came to find out that it was a Miyota 8 series movement. It does not have hacking, which when I was buying this watch, I didn't even know what hacking was. I like knew that it was a feature, but I didn't know what it meant, if that makes any sense. And I didn't really love this watch. I liked it and I thought it was really clean and I liked how Timex had the quick release strap so I could put on a bunch of different straps. But I ultimately ended up selling it to my friend who I think that was his first automatic watch, the guy that I sold it to. So I parted with it just because it doesn't have hacking and I didn't love wearing it. And really that's like the only reason why I got rid of it. Next, we have a watch that I contemplate buying probably once a month. And that is the Bulova Lunar Pilot the 45 millimeter older version that comes on a NATO strap as well as like a black, what I call a police officer's belt strap is what it kind of looks like to me. Once again, because of Teddy Baldassar. I watched his video on the Lunar Pilot and learned about it and I thought the history and the story was really cool and that you could get the watch for a lot cheaper than the MSRP price. And so I bought it locally for I think it was $260, $250, give or take somewhere around there. And I actually really, really liked that watch a lot. The only problem is I have really small girl wrists. On my wrist right now is the Christopher Ward the 12 36 millimeters. And in my opinion, it fits my wrist very well. And this is a small watch. It being 45 millimeters with, it was like a, something outrageous. Like I want to say 51 or 52 millimeter, uh, the lug to lug distance. And that just hung over my wrist like crazy. And of course, because it's quartz, I just didn't enjoy it the way that someone else would enjoy it. And so I ended up selling it to someone who was actually really passionate about the watch. And I'm really glad that I sold it to the person that I did sell it to. And that watch is really cool. And what's funny is I've had that watch twice now, but I get it. I don't wear it. I sell it. I find a good deal on it. So I buy it again. Same thing. I don't enjoy wearing it because it's big and then I sell it. And so I just, it's no longer with me. This one is kind of a little bit shameful to talk about. A little bit it is my green Tissot PRX I sold that a while ago because the blue dial ice blue PRX came out and when I saw that I'm like oh I really want that but I don't need two PRX's it's kind of sad that I sold it because it was my first nice watch I got it at Jared Jewelers and I think I paid just under $700 for it so I paid like the full retail price for that watch and that one kind of felt like a significant purchase on a watch and that one was my first nice watch and so selling it is kind of sad anytime I see pictures of a green dial PRX it just kind of reminds me of 
of my first nice watch and it makes me just a little bit sad. I just thought it was a really cool, really clean watch, but I no longer have it. Next up, we have the Orange Dial Seiko GMT. I got this watch for a really good deal on eBay and I just bought it because it was a good deal and I love the color orange. But the main reason why I sold that watch is just because I had no use for a GMT watch. That watch had a collar GMT, so when you pull out the crown and isolate the crown to the first position, when you rotate it, it rotates the GMT hand rather than the local hour hand. And so that watch is intended ideally for people who would be sitting at a desk and maybe they have business in Spain. And so they wanna know the time zone of where they live and where they do business here, and then also where they do business in Spain. So they can easily just change the second hour hand to Spain time and know the time here and the time in Spain. The GMT was cool, but I just really had no need for a bright orange GMT collar GMT watch. Sometimes I miss that watch, but honestly, not really. Like having a true GMT is just, in my opinion, the way to go, just makes the most amount of sense. And that watch was a good watch and I did get it for a good deal, thankfully, but that watch is goodbye. Before I was making this video, I was trying to think of all the watches that I have passed on and sold just so I could like verify that I have memorized all of them. And I think that this is the last one and it is the aforementioned ice blue PRX. But I ended up selling this watch because of the watch on my wrist, which I also talked about in both the PRX video and in the video on the Christopher Ward the 12. But gaining more knowledge and trying out a bunch more watches led me to want something that is four hertz, has really good finishing, and is small around 36 to 38 millimeters is my comfort range. Sometimes I actually really miss the Ice Blue PRX. We were just barely recently watch shopping and I saw it at a mall in one of the Tissot sections. And it, it just makes me sad because I actually do have some good memories in that watch and I do really like the dial. It is really clean and just super super simple and clean. That ice blue color is really nice. But like I said, after having this, it's just, this scratches all of my itches for anything that is integrated bracelet related. I think this watch just looks so clean. The size on my little baby girly wrists is really good. And just Christopher Ward as a brand, I think I like more than the brand Tiso. This video was kind of all over the place in terms of just rambling on and on and on, but I just wanted to make a, this kind of little update to my watch collection video. I was meaning to talk about these watches in that video, but of course I forgot and the video was really long anyways. And so I figured let's just make a little separate video. And so those are all the watches that I no longer have. Some of them I really miss. Some of them are good. Some of them are okay. Comment down below if there's any watches that you yourself have sold and maybe you regret, maybe you were glad that you sold them and it brought something else. What is your watch selling stories? Leave them down below. I'm curious to know. Again, thanks for watching this video. I don't know why you did, but thank you. Goodbye.